Yeah, all good. Yes, now. Okay. Hello, everyone. Welcome back to our SDIP sessions. Uh, yes. Today we will be discussing this <coughs> data persistence. So by the name of it, uh, you can understand that it's a very, very broad topic that can cover many of the things. Uh, I will try to cover most of those areas. And let's see, I mean, we are open to suggestions. If there is anything which you want specifically to look into it, we can uh, add it up. So let's take a look at what we will be covering. Okay, so basically we will be covering, <coughs> we will start with the file organizations, how what are the file organizations for uh, to saving a record or saving a file? And then we go through indexes, learn something about them. And then we look into some major database storage engines. We will particularly be focusing on few. And then we will go through the partitioning mechanisms and then the secondary indexing techniques. After this, we will look into the storage and indexing mechanisms for graph databases. And then we will take few examples of uh, storage engines like how Kafka stores, how Redis, and we can add if there are any other suggestions available. Uh, it will be a little hard to cover all those things in one session. So uh, I will try to cover this storage engines, till storage engines today, and then in next session, we will be covering the rest of the topics. So I, let's, I think so, so that's the good approach because this subject is very important. So let's go slowly and see how much we can cover. Yeah. Okay, so uh, let's start. Uh, why this is happening? Okay, so we will start with this uh, storage file organizations. So what is actually a file organization is uh, <clears throat> data is actually converted into binary format and saved into data blocks capable of saving a certain amount of data. And to optimally save this data in those data blocks, a structure or an organization is required to save it efficiently and to access it efficiently. And that structure or organization is called file organization. So file, when we are using file, it's actually conceptually, you can think of it as a table which has multiple records. So a file has a multiple records. Okay, so this is what file organization is. So uh, <clears throat> the first type of file organization is actually sequential. So this is the very basic one and most simplest also. So in this, what happens that each record is inserted sequentially in the next data block available. Okay, so uh, we will see through that example. But first, let's see that um, in these examples, wherever I am showing this R1 or R2, this is actually a whole record. This is actually a whole record, uh, or you can say a whole row. Okay, so in sequential file organizations, let's say this is the beginning of the file, and this is the end of the file, and each record is inserted at the end of the file. Okay, so <clears throat> this mechanism is called pile file method. So here there is no sorting, nothing is just keeps on adding <clears throat> at the end of the file. As it, the record gets inserted, it keeps on adding at the end of the file. Okay, and uh, if the other form of this is each record is inserted at the end of the file, and then a sorting is performed to have all the records in the file in a sorted order. Okay, and this is called sorted file method. So records are still inserted sequentially, but after the sequential insert, the, a sorting is performed. And if the sorting is not performed, it's basically keep on inserting uh, <coughs> record as they comes. So these, these two types are basically the sequential file organizations. So, uh, yeah. sorting is done on which information, like uh, the landing, uh, the time at which the insertion happened, or how? Or the user has to specify mm -hmm. what? 
Okay, so uh, if you want to understand it right now, the sequences are basic. Uh, the sorting is done basically on a column field. Let's say there is a record. Either you select the first column or second column, whatever it's there, and based on that, the sorting will be performed. There are various mechanisms of doing it, sorting, keeping it index and sorting index. So there are different kind of things in there. But the basic principle of this is that records are inserted at the end, and then sorting is performed. We will go through all these integrities later. But the principle of sequential file organization is that. Okay, so <clears throat> the, the benefits of this, it's that uh, it's very simple design and no, not much effort involved in storing the data. Let's keep on directly going and storing at the end of the file. This one is very beneficial in when there is a huge amount of data to be written. Okay, and, and basically <clears throat> if it is sorted, then it's good for this uh, report generation and a statical, statistical data also. This, this sorted file method has an overhead of sorting. So that's a small drawback for this method because just writing will not help. If you sort, then there's an overhead of that. Uh, but I think the fetching will be faster than that. Yes. yes, fetching will be very fast. And I mean, because uh, two more benefits, I mean, fetching would not be that fast if it is not sequential. Because if uh, then you have to read through all those things and find out it. If it is sequential, then you probably reach that specific record very quickly. So that's why this sorted things are preferred more because these are searching and I know reading is little faster. Okay, so <clears throat> the next one is heap file organization. Okay, in this heap file of organization, the records are inserted at the end of the file. If data block is full and another data block is used. Okay, so they keep on inserting and if the data block is no longer capable of holding uh, a record, a new data block is uh, used to uh, save that record. The only thing is that that the new data block may not be the just next data block. It can be anywhere in the uh, <coughs> memory or anywhere on the disk. Okay, so it is kind of similar to pile file method which we saw earlier. It's just that it's not in a next data block. It's always on any other data block. Okay. So this one is, is the, the benefits of this are uh, it's very good in bulk in insertion. Okay. And if the uh, files are too much and the file size is actually small, then this method is quite beneficial. So if you see insertion, goes into any data block. So the drawback side of this is <coughs> ordered fetching. If you want to have an ordered fetching, then you have to go to all the blocks available and then uh, do something on that. Okay, and <coughs> if the record is deleted, that data memory, that data block is not freed. So the optimal uh, use of the memory is not performed. Can we say the data write is faster in this case because data can be written parallelly, right? Blocks of data because it's not sequential. No, it's it, it, it's kind of sequential only. It's just that the heap. Let's say uh, you are just keep on writing at the end of the file. The data block, if it is full, next data block is created. Uh, it's not hash that you know where to get to the data block. So for for okay. reading. You have to get all the data blocks available because you don't know which data reside in which data block. Okay. Okay. So that's that's the drawback. So it is basically more helpful when there is you know bulk insert. Reading is not that optimized. Sorry, uh, how it is helping in bulk insert? <clears throat> bulk insert, you don't have to care. You don't have to do anything. Is coming. It's going into end of the file and data block is. Uh, used if data block is full, any other data block is created. So it keeps on going on. So you don't have to do any kind of processing or any kind of, uh, you know, algorithm or anything you have to put for writing it down. It just keeps on writing on the available data block. So uh, one conclusion here, uh, when we say heap, heap file, so that means, uh, I mean, uh, that data block that you're mentioning, hmm. that is the actual physical, uh, 
heap in the actual physical disk, right? Yes. Uh, yeah. In other terms, I would say it's a separate file. Uh, it's a separate file. I mean, a separate record. So, I mean, uh, few data blocks can be a file. So, file uh, conceptually, you see that uh, it's it's a table. Okay. So there are five records. Mm -hmm. Okay. So now there are data blocks. Let's say, for example, there is one data block which is capable of holding three records. Yeah. Depending upon the size of the record. So when this five records are going to be inserted, one data block is used. Record one, record two, record three is inserted. Now this data block is filled. Then any other data block is taken, and four and five are inserted in there. Okay. So uh, just uh, one confusion with the sequential fi uh, file organization. Yes. Uh, when we say the sequential, that means uh, whatever is the next available memory slot, it will take it. Not it won't be yeah. random. It will be in a sequence. Shouldn't exactly. that be faster? Shouldn't that be faster? Because mm -hmm. uh, latency would be. I mean, there is no uh, not much of mm -hmm. latency in finding the slot which is free. Mm -hmm. Rather than that, whatever is available in the next. Uh, yeah. I mean, whatever is the next, we take it. Yeah, yeah. So I mean, these are different mechanisms. I mean, uh, you choose definitely sequential is always. Faster than any of the mechanisms. Sequential save will be. Uh, I mean, there are some studies which say that it can be an exponentially faster than any of the other mechanisms. Because you don't have to do anything. You just the sequence next block, next block, next block. Something. I mean, sometimes what happens that this memory optimization in this sequential block is the the you know the record size is not that big. Okay, it's very 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 small. So the memory is not that beautifully optimized. That's all I can say. I mean, this I both are similar. It's for, just sequential, a... uh, for sequential uh, file organization, there is one problem that uh, you have to have that much space uh, at a block available. Let's say a file yeah. is of 10 MB, that 10 MB slot should be available. Otherwise, what, what the system will do that it has to do disk fragmentation and then free some space uh, and make it, it as we guess the file and then only you can store it. Because it's going to use a uh, continuous memory location to uh, store the data. Instead, um, as compared to heap file organization, it can find block and put anywhere it, it gets the that uh, block size of data, uh, block size of uh, location. But that's the problem in the sequential. It cannot it cannot uh, uh, save the file if that uh, file size uh, uh, file size block is not available somewhere at a continuous memory location. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Correct. So, in, 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 not, not sure. Not sure. David. Even sequential also. Um, for example, if you take uh, the Windows operating system, the file system, we often end up doing defragmentation. Um, yeah. So, not sure if uh, files are continuously still uh, there. Also, um, there will be some linkages. For example, the if the if the space is full in a particular uh, disk location. It may put a pointer to the next location and then start to write from there. Um, it might be fixed blocks. Right? I mean, in, in heap, I believe the fifth block size is fixed. But in terms of sequential, it may not be fixed blocks, but it might still, because you, you are parallel writing many files, and therefore fragmentation will always happen. So uh, the, if, if it is happening in the sequential file organization, then it is not very different than heap file organization. No, he, uh, the only difference is heap file will have fixed fixed size per block. That's all it is. The sequential may not have uh, any fixed size. This is just putting it into perspective. Uh, obviously, um, in th the theory part of it is only covering you know how one file will be organized. Mm. But but if you extend it to an uh, entire um, uh, memory uh, of multiple files, that's when that's when you will you will start to find some similarity. I believe. Mm -hmm. Mm. Okay. No, 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 listen. This is this is good to understand. Yeah. Okay. So uh, the next one is hash, hash file organization. This is also called direct or random file organization. So in this, what happens actually? A <coughs> hash function is used to calculate the address of the data block. Okay. And this hash function is generally applied to the key column or any other non key column and their attributes and then this hash function calculates the data block okay and the record is stored in that data block so the record would be stored in <coughs> any 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 different uh, block of the memory it need not to be sequential 
uh, each record is stored randomly irrespective of the other record okay so uh, because you are maintaining this i mean uh, this has function calculates the address so any insertion or any delete or let's say any read you don't need to worry about where the data is stored because the, this has hash function is actually a uh, hash key is actually a address to the data block so it's indexing kind of indexing yeah interesting so, yeah, i'm now i'm now beginning to think the sequential file probably is designed for tape uh, devices you know yeah because in a tape device you are only writing one file at a time and you sequentially write until the file ends and then you start with the next file therefore that can probably the sequential file is purely for that medium uh, whereas uh, heap and uh, and hash direct so when the disk systems evolved probably that's what these things came yeah because that, that as, as, it is, as it is saying that it will ca it can only write one after another the records mm. Mm. Yeah. So okay. Now, from if you look at it from that angle, then there is no conflict. Sequential is always for tape medium, where you just go with a blind sequence only, mm -hmm. and the rest can have direct, direct, uh, direct index access. No, but in the sequential file also there were two types, like sorting one also. So then I don't see that happening. <laughs> no, no, that, that would not be entirely true. Sequential file organizations are used in this disk based also. And uh, I mean, I can we, we, I, we in future slides we will see some of the most modern databases are using the sequential file organization with some advancement, but they are using the sequential uh, sequential method. Take the benefit of fast writes. Mm, okay. Okay. Let's let's continue. Then we can see. So, uh, in this direct or hash method. Uh, we can clearly see that there is no sorting required, okay? Because the key and key has a value, uh, the hash and hash is actually the address of the data block, okay? Then there is uh, there is one problem in this then, right? If we want to get the data from a different value, we will not be able to get. Yeah, so I am coming to it. I, I was discussing the pros first. <laughs> we all know those, those, these things very deeply. That's why we are jumping on. <laughs> So, yes, so yeah. In this, the the other benefit is that uh, the multiple transactions can be performed because it's it's all on the hash, and you know the hash gets everything. So this multiple records, accessing, updating, and deleting are quick. These are the main uh, pros for this. The <clears throat> other the, the drawback of this is actually uh, you know the search. The search queries are not very efficient. And if the search query is based on non hash columns, then it's, it's a trouble. You have to go to everything, bring it all and then perform a search. OK, and if the hash column, let's say uh, whatever column you are choose to do the hashing, if hash column is very frequently updated, then also there is a trouble because you know the hash functions are created and then file is saved so it's it's it's, it's a lot of thing to be done if the key column is updated so many times the other drawback of this is there is a chance of accidentally deleting a data if the hash function or the hashing mechanism which we are using is not done perfectly right Okay, so let's say if, if the hash function is done on a column, let's say name. So if the, the name of the two person can be same and the same hash is created, so it can accidentally delete the data. So these things are there for the hash method. Any other drawbacks or uh, benefits you can see? The search problem is same for other, other organizations also. Yeah, Hmm. Actually, I was thinking one question in my mind uh, that uh, are we expecting this file storage mechanism to answer the search queries? I don't think the application running on top of it, which are using this uh, file organization, uh, uh, how, how they are using it. It depends on those applications that how the data will be uh, searched. It's not up to these storage, uh, storage mechanisms that how the data will be retrieved, right? 
Okay. Um, the, uh, the difference is, yeah, you, you're right. To a large extent, yeah, it depends on the application, it depends on the medium also. Uh, a tape device will have the worst of the uh, complexity because you have to scan from the beginning to the end. Even if you know the location, you still have to spin all the way there. Um, but with the different mediums, then the files, file system, the, the applications can also have an electronic. Because let's say in this uh, hash organization, if somebody ha somebody has to design that, what are the columns on which the data can be searched? And accordingly, he has to uh, ha he has to keep the hash and then only store the data, right? Means uh, I don't think this system, uh, this data storage by themselves, they have to devise a way that how uh, optimally a record can be fetched or something like that. So it's a storage, it's not a query system. I think at some level, they, these, uh, I mean, the hardware is also, they do it because, I mean, why we evolved into disk based because, um, I mean, the access time will be reduced if it is a disk to, uh, and because they are, the fragments are cylindrically arranged rather than a tape. So I think these kind of things, a little bit, these hardware is also take care of, right? Yes, for the search. But, but even before the yeah, so I'm saying uh, uh, one of the requirements uh, for these uh, organizations as well as the hardware underneath is to uh, have um, uh, less access time also. Exactly. So if you have to write a file and read a file, uh, let's say the file is uh, one megabyte, how quickly can, which of these will give us that uh, capability to write quickly as well as read quickly? Probably that's the primary use of this. The search will be a secondary uh, use case, but then there will be indexes and many other supporting mechanisms will come in for that. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Let, let's continue further, and then maybe we can brainstorm on this once we understand all all organizations. <laughs> okay. So the next one is uh, ISAM. Index sequential access method. Uh, I think everyone knows about it. This MySQL and all those things were initially built on that only. So in this is, is similar to sequential, uh, sorted sequential method. And uh, it uses the primary key column to create the <clears throat> sequentially, uh, to sort the sequential storage into that. So index are generated on each primary key and mapped to the record. The index is actually the address of the record in the file. Okay, so that's what ISM is. It's, it's basically very simple, similar to uh, sorted sequential. The only difference is that uh, indexing is performed on the primary key and index is actually the address of the data block where the record is residing. Uh, is it so, very similar to hash? file organization? Uh, no, Jadip, in hash, you don't know where the data is residing here. You know where the data is residing because uh, it's, it's sequential. It's sequential insert and uh, the index is based on the primary key. It's not hash function that any data block in the memory can be used. Mm. So you're saying that primary? Yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm also struggling to see the difference. Mm -hmm. I think that in the index sequential access, uh, access uh, mechanism, uh, when we are storing the data, we are not uh, hashing and then storing. So the actual, uh, I think we store in ranges uh, and then index that also. So this is what I think. Uh, I'm not sure whether that, here you uh, were saying that we will select few columns and on the basis of that hash will be calculated. Dash help with hash will, uh, and there will be a mapping stored somewhere that hash to mem uh, disk location. So this lookup will be used to get the data. This is what I understand from hash direct file organization. Mm, okay, so I mean, uh, I will I will try to make it more understandable. Let me try. So this this index is not created anywhere. So it's just a calculate which is actually the address. So every time you have to fetch, you have to calculate again, and that hash will result the address of the data block is not that you keeping the hash indexes somewhere no but uh, if, you, uh, if you okay 
so every time i try to get it will take those two column and it will do the hashing and it will get the value yes but okay raja in the index one this hash to uh, memory location is already stored uh, sorry this uh, index to memory uh, disk location is already stored somewhere and so that whenever this data is passed it will go and search that index and it will go to, it, will, it will take the data it doesn't have to do hash or anything something like that that's what might be the difference because when you get index this uh, uh, tree search can be happening very fast, can can happen very fast right <coughs> okay i mean uh, are we clear with this item yes yeah. okay so uh, the main drawback which we just discussed the main drawback of item is maintaining and storing the indexes somewhere yeah, it will take storage yeah that will take storage also and maintenance of also the uh, if 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 anything is deleted or any update is happening the indexes needs to be refreshed or recalculated and then saved again so that's the overhead okay so the next one is b plus tree of file organizations so this is a advanced they said that i mean they, this is a advanced version of isam uh, the key indexes are in form of a binary tree okay with one root node and in b plus tree the data is basically residing or uh, a pointer is reside pointer to the data block is residing at the leaf nodes okay so that's uh, an advanced version of ism so i mean fetching and searching all those thing happens through the b tree So, which is I, was I, I was thinking I was thinking I is doing this. Now it's very hard for me to understand the difference between I S M and B plus T. I S M is just keeping a primary key index, not in a binary tree format. Index is always index is always saved in this way only. I think no. no I think index at the first level only is stored in I S M. In B plus trees, I think uh, uh, for the next level indexes can also be created. Index. How about uh, when we create index? How the data is saved? Uh, it it is saved in this tree manner only, right? Uh, Raja, can you uh, help us? No. When index is created, data is stored uh, in the respective memory blocks, and for that memory location, uh, whatever that address is, uh, the for that address, the indexes are created, and for those indexes also, uh, further uh, indexes can be created. So I mean, this is how the whole B plus tree is created. Yeah. Okay. The other way to look at it is B plus tree means it's a balanced tree, right? The B plus, uh, I believe, it stands for some some kind of a balanced tree. So mm -hmm. here, what happens is, uh, let's say the root node, right? There, there is uh, if I remember correctly, the root node will have uh, the range of keys, um, but it can only have a fixed number of keys. Okay. So let's say uh, here the root node says uh, 105 is there in the middle. So anything from 100 to 104 will go to the left left side of the branch. Anything that is greater than 105 will go to the right side of the branch. Yeah. So then again on the left side of the branch, you again have to have a balanced tree. Um, so anything uh, 101, 100, 101 go to the left, and therefore the others go here. So so you organize it in in these kind of um, um, balanced tree. Um, therefore, when you search, there, there is no hashing or anything here. When you search. You do the depth first algorithm or breadth first algorithm in the tree, um, and therefore uh, in a tree, if you are if it's a balanced tree, it's going to give you logarithmic uh, re uh, reduction um, yeah. in your uh, algorithm in your big O. So if you if you it's supposed to be log n uh, complexity. Yeah. Yeah. That's how this is uh, efficient. I think, but, but data, data, there is hmm, there is a data block also, right? So for example, if you look at one zero two. On the left side, this has no more uh, leaf node. Therefore, the data will be residing uh, in that block itself. So, so th this is how you organize the data so that you, when you step down, you will be accessing the actual data itself. So, so I mean, what uh, is the difference between ISAM then? ISAM, there is no tree structure. 
I send is uh, okay. Can you go up there? Please? So I send is pure uh, hash, right? There is no balance tree method. It's just a hash. No. So it is index. If it is a hash, then there is. A, what is the difference between hash file or hash? Yeah. Okay, and let me tell you the difference. Hash means if you are retrieving one record, you find the hash and you are able to retrieve it very fast. Mm -hmm. But what if you have to retrieve a range of records? So in your uh, so your balance tree, deepest tree, is uh, optimum for both retrieving single record as well as retrieving range of records. So, so imagine I asked, I want to get all students uh, with the ID greater than 230 to uh, 289. Let's say I have a range like that. Mm -hmm. So in deepest tree, you can quickly go to that particular location and you will, you will get a block, you know. But in index, you for every key in that range, you have to keep on calculating index and doing and retrieving it. That, that, therefore, uh, your complexity of uh, big O notation, right? So you're going to have N as a complexity, whereas in deepest tree, you will have log unit N. So industry B plus will perform better right, in range retrievals. Often in databases, your queries are all range based. Select, select a particular thing where salary is greater than this and less than this. So that's where the key difference is. So when the, this uh, B plus V1 is created, uh, used in uh, databases, let's say we say that mobile number through which I need to get, get the data more frequently. So it will use mobile number to create the B plus V and then uh, you can use, you can query anyhow for the range or for a particular value as well. Exactly, exactly. So you can go by range as well as uh, single single record access. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah, is, is that is that uh, falling in line with what you understand also? <clears throat> yes, <clears throat> yes, Raja. The only main thing that in B plus trees, the records are actually residing on the leaf nodes only, and which are also linked. So. Uh, if you have to access a range or something, it can be done from this side also instead of going from uh, tree first. So what we were saying was only B tree file organization. B plus tree has this additional benefit of linking the leaf nodes uh, in a sequential linked list. Yeah. Oh, maybe you need to build that arrow also from one. Uh, yeah, I mean, I mean, I, it was just a startup. I mean, I am uh, will go into very deep into B plus tree and all those things. Oh, okay, good. So let's continue that. Uh, okay, so uh, next one is cluster file organization. This is not very popular, but I mean it's, it's used in some uh, relational databases. So what happens here that two tables are combined together and saved in a single file and created a cluster key. So we see that uh, the primary key in both of the things are used to create the key for data blocks. Here, a cluster key is created based on the link between these two. Okay, and the whole, uh, these two tables are stored as the same file. Okay, and joined already. Yeah. And uh, the, again, the cluster key can be uh, indexed. I mean, it can be created through an index like this, or it can be a hash clusters also. The hash method is created by on, on any of the columns and then performed. So this is not very much used, but uh, this is again a concept of file organization. OK. Uh, hmm. Should we should we move to the next one or uh, any any other thing on this file organizations? Nothing more. Just one thing uh, when when we are inserting the data, mm -hmm. so basically when it is the uh, I mean the organization is storing the data uh, in this uh, what I say using the cluster key. Mm -hmm. uh, let's say if the record from the second table is coming later, mm -hmm. so it is basically an update that happens there. Yeah, so basically this whole process will be performed every time either they insert in this table or this table. The whole merging and creating a table and creating an index will be performed every time, every update. So that's why it's not very uh, beneficial at the time of insertion. But at the reading time, uh, you can get two or more tables in one hit. I mean, this looks to me like uh, 
I mean, in in databases we talked about, but data models we talked about normalization. This looks like denormalization. Yes. <coughs> okay. So should, yeah. Okay. So uh, uh, moving to an echo is coming from. Somewhere. Okay, so now let's move to uh, orientations. Uh, we have uh, we know that row oriented databases or column oriented database. Let's try to just have a quick look at what these are. Okay, so let's say this is a sample table, customer ID, which has name, city, and a state. Okay, so when we say it's a row oriented uh, database, that means each record is a row. So this one is one row this one is another row when we say column oriented this one becomes one row in the data block this one is one data block this one is one data block okay so uh, what will happen when we say value oriented any guesses i think it is column oriented and the data is somehow sorted key value okay so the in value oriented it's basically key value only when key is created and each value each value in this table is just stored okay and then another key is stored to say see one and then four seven ten this forms one record so one is actually this one Four, <coughs> seven is this one. Four is this one. ABC call. Seven this one, and ten MN. Okay. So now this eleven, twelve, thirteen. These are basically the rows in the table. So what actually? Why these things are necessary? Actually, these are very small, small optimization. If you can think through it. See in these two, this let's say MN, which is the state. In the table, it's three times. And in the column oriented and row oriented also, these have stored three times. But in here, MN is only stored one times and then a reference is created. So it's just a small optimization. So these are basically just to understand what are row oriented, column oriented, and value oriented databases. So does that mean that every every time uh, any unique value will be stored only once? Yes. And just the references will be stored as a uh, row. Yes, I think value oriented is very good for uh, disk optimization or memory correct, optimization. Correct. Column oriented is very good for processing on a particular column only, mm -hmm. and row oriented is very good for transactional uh, information. Yeah, so these are the three benefits of people. Okay, uh, should we move to the next? Yeah. Okay, so now let's see through the indexes, uh, which we have talked about a lot of things. So, what is actually an index? A single index is actually which has a key and a data reference. This actually a forms a index. Okay, and uh, while defining an index. Uh, there are few attributes which need to be uh, considered and answered and these attributes are access type uh, access type means which access type you are creating an index for either it's a value based search or a range access whatever it is okay access time this is defined as a time needed to find a particular data element or set of elements so this is access time Insertion time, time taken to find the appropriate space and insert the new data. Deletion time is the time taken to find and delete an item and refresh the indexes. Okay, and space overhead is actually the amount of space required to save the indexes. 
so these are the basic attributes to answer while we are uh, deciding or designing an index mechanism okay any confusion till now no okay so <coughs> sorry so that two basic type of mechanisms for uh, indexing one is sequential or ordered and the other one is hash <laughs> just one minute eh? okay so <laughs> sequential indexes are uh, based on the sorted ordering of values okay so uh, let's say primary key which is sorted and uh, that is used for creating the indexes so uh, these are called sequential indexes these are fast and more traditional and then again it can be distributed into two uh, which said dense index which means that every key or every primary key will have an index this part says that okay some can be ignored or not every key uh, is indexed so this is just mechanisms hash uh, sorry hash is basically just creating a hash function which is used at the index for that particular key okay so these are two basic indexing mechanisms types primary indexing these are basically way sequential indexing where we create the index out of the primary key in the sorted order cluster indexing we can we can group one or more columns and create a index out of that to uh, fetch the records secondary indexing is that instead uh, with primary indexing if there is any other column you want to index you want to create uh, create the index out of that and save it that also and both can work in together so that's why for fetching the primary indexing is used is there any other thing the secondary indexing can be used and then there is multi level indexing yeah. <coughs> i'm sorry so multi level indexing means the indexing has been done at multiple levels uh, we can go into this one later but these are basically the four types of uh, indexing okay now uh, we will be moving towards the storage engines okay what are the basic database storage engines are there okay we will start with hash index based okay so in this storage engine what actually happens that uh, a in memory hash map is maintained and backed with a file on the disk okay so <clears throat> if you see this is the in memory hash up hash map and this is a byte offset of the actual uh, storage of that in the on the disk okay in this the up updates are append only so whatever comes up it it, it keeps on uh, appending only so let's say if the same record is create uh, already created and then you have to up, uh, update for that record comes it will be an append only so it will go at the end itself and <coughs> the physical files generally need to be broken into smaller segments and each segment is uh, then saved on the disk so now i mean if we can we, if we can clearly see that if there are two versions of the same data then some compaction or some merging need to be performed to have one copy of that so in this hash index that is also need to be performed crash recovery in this kind of uh, databases is maintained by uh, either having a snapshot of this okay or going through all the hash stored in the disk and then recreating this okay till now any confusion in this so what will happen to the once the record is updated will be, mm -hmm. you will say the updated account will be written at the end and the index uh, byte offset will be updated 
Hmm. The old uh, record will not be comp- compacted or anything, is it? In this, yeah. Uh, yeah. So uh, in this kind of in wherever there is a append only thing, uh, a hmm. separate mechanism of compaction and merging need hmm. happens. That that uh, maintains the old version. Either either it needs to be removed or whatever, and deletes hmm. basically. <clears throat> What happened that a, a tombstone is created. I mean, let's say a, a, a segment is marked as okay deleted, not mm. physically deleted from the disk, but it is marked as deleted. And when the compaction mm. happens, it deletes that thing. Mm. Okay, I like that pattern, tombstone. <laughs> <laughs> okay, and then one one last question. Suppose if the file is uh, very big, terabytes. Uh, well, mm. let's say the file is one terab- terabyte, huge mm. one. Mm-hmm. Uh, then um, how would, okay so it doesn't matter wherever we are writing it in the disk uh, the byte of in generally in, in generally this hash index this this huge physical files are broken down into smaller segments and each segment is then uh, is stored mm-hmm. okay got it and that's why i mean because there are different segments the compaction and merging is required i mean if you want to get one data which is huge right so and it is stored in different segments then the merging and giving you the results is required okay sorry i also forgot the context is database here so we have to talk in terms of records only not as files yeah yeah okay, okay. but anyway compaction must be happening as a thread thread I means uh, when as soon as there is some threshold reaches it has to do compaction otherwise it yeah. cannot be happening on a record fetch or no no session, right? no no it generally is not uh, initiated on a record update insert anything uh, it's it's there are various mechanisms some mechanisms say that okay if data block uh, is i mean let's say in a segment there are three four data blocks and we set a threshold to five data blocks as soon as it reaches the five th- uh, data block the compaction and merging kicks in so that kind of mechanisms are generally used okay. but and uh, the main thing is that when you try to read it at any instant of time there can be many segments of the same data right i mean uh, because it's append only there can be many segments of same data so uh, the system while reading needs to merge read all those segments merge and give you the final result Okay, the next one is actually the B tree based. Just wait. Okay, in this, uh, so <coughs> the blocks are connected like a linked list. The leaf nodes uh, either contain data itself or reference to the blocks which hold the data. So that we discussed already. So B tree is generally a balanced tree. So as Raja explained earlier also, so you have references in here. Okay, and uh, between 300 to 400, the references are there. So this is what actually a balanced tree, binary tree means. And uh, a B tree with four level, okay, and having a bind, branching factor of 500 so branching factor is that uh, how much one node can contain either reference or data okay so the maximum number of uh, and it based on the data block okay so if the branching factor is 500 okay so one binary tree of four level can store up to 256 tb of data so it's 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 it's, it's uh, it's efficient and it's fast because uh, the searching, I mean, point queries are very fast in binary tree, binary tree. And with the B plus trees, the linkages at the leaf node, the range queries are also uh, quite fast. The main thing is here that uh, crash recovery is generally that the whole B tree is created from scratch reading to the database. So in, in, in advanced databases, they are having certain mechanisms to uh, avoid going through or scanning the whole database to create the binary tree. But the general principle is that B tree needs to be created for a crash recovery. Okay. 
the third one is <coughs> log structure merge tree based so lsm based so these are basically <coughs> what happens that uh, they have one uh, small storage in the memory okay and all the writes happen to that in memory thing and then uh, if the size is filled or after a certain period of time that whole batch in the memory is flushed that process is called flush and then all the batch is actually is a sequential write on the disk okay not very clear for me not, not very clear for me okay so basically they are in in memory let's say in memory table is maintained okay all the writes happens in the in memory only okay after a period of time or let's say i set a size of that in memory let's say uh, 2 mb or something as soon as that reaches 2 mb it uh initiates a process which takes all the batch because now everything is in the memory right now all the memory thing is now converted into a sequential write to the disk mm -hmm. okay okay so there is always a chance that the data that is in the memory mm -hmm. uh, in case of a crash mm -hmm. uh, may um, may be lost or is there a recovery mechanism for that yeah so generally in re in this the recovery mechanism is like uh, commit logs or yeah I mean, uh, if you have you seen this uh, snapshot of transactions which is also maintain the commit log or you can say uh, transaction log so whatever happens is is maintained there and using that this in memory thing is uh, i mean this this flush is again maintained I would believe. Question is the value mm -hmm. actually points to the uh, disk location where the data is. Like, right? so if you keep it in memory only, then the disk location will not be available at that time. So, which or is it only the the key value we keep in memory, and the rest is returned to database? Uh, uh, sorry, the rest is returned to the disk. Uh, the writing to the disk happens only after a certain period. till that time everything is in memory only mm -hmm. what the submit it? logs that you are talking about uh, these are <coughs> when the uh, data is being written uh, or once the data is written into the disk then only these no, no. logs are this uh, is this is in the memory itself whenever data is written in the memory a commit mm -hmm. log maintained maintained in the memory only or is it also maintained in some disk it is also maintained in the disk then rather we have the uh, data available right no the commit okay. log no no i was huh. sorry i mean the commit log no, is saved separately with the index indexing method when in index we have the key and uh, the value points to the disk location that, that's how the indexes uh, we saw so far mm -hmm. but in this it looks like this is not an indexing um, uh, there's no it's different slightly different here right the, Yeah. It is just a storage of data only. So we have uh, memory tables where we keep data, and then at regular intervals we flush these into disk. Yeah. Set up small sort of files. Okay. Yeah, I mean this is mainly beneficial in there is a huge amount of writes in a given period of time. So uh, this. Cassandra, Hadoop, these are using this kind of structures for heavy writes. So because writes are done in the memory only, and then a sequential write is performed after some time. So this process is uh, fast, and uh, when it is written to the disk, it's actually <coughs> you will see later it's it's immutable. While binary trees are mutable, so you can uh, do in place updates, and then you have to reorganize everything according to that. in this case everything is in the memory and a batch flush is done and batch is written sequentially
okay we can we, we can discuss this because these two things i will be discussing more on this uh, slide so we can discuss uh, in detail in these two okay okay i think these are very fundamental for all of us to understand mm. so we should go into more details yeah mm. okay okay the other ones uh, are inverted indexes based so uh, what happens in this uh, this is these are basically used for this i mean elastic search uh or any other search indexes they, they use this kind of indexing and uh, <coughs> index are composed of shards and each shard is further broken down into segments and each segment is basically an inverted index mm, not very clear huh? yeah i know <laughs> but this one i covered in the mm -hmm. in the search engine information retrieval topic also yeah um to me this is clear but uh, if anyone wants to know more we can discuss also can you just explain once more so, so normal indexes if you look at a book at the end you have the index right yeah. what it says is in this book these are all the terms and uh, the terms are found in uh, these these pages that is normal indexing mm -hmm. but if you if you are taking only one document normal indexing is <laughs> what if you have um, 100 documents or 1000 documents now you don't mm -hmm. want to go by each document uh, the words in the document you want to go the other way meaning you want to pick up the words and you want to find out in which books they are found so that's the notion of inverted index so let's say you you take 10 books and you have um, 1000 words in um, commonly in all the 10 books you get an index for 1000 words and they say each word is found in book 1 page 2 uh, book 5 page 6 page 6 so so that's called inverted index um now this is this is only used in searching because uh, in search you are talking about a um, uh, directory of uh, um, a million documents and you you search by keywords so they they felt so over there because it uh, yeah. i'm not able to understand the inverted meaning here because uh, in the in single book also towards the end all the words are mentioned that that are present in the book and you can find in this particular location right correct correct so so that's only within the context of a book um, yeah, so the index that, is attached to this one is at a higher level uh, i'm just going by your example uh, at a higher level there are 100 books then there will be million uh, words those million words uh, against that it will be written that in this book this page number it will be there exactly so so i mean it's, it's the the word inverted um, i mean the way to understand this is indexes are attached to a book but if you separate the indexes from the book uh, you call it inverted index meaning you you the you, where you start off with is the index and then where you reach is a book um so so that's the common sensical definition of why they call it inverted index but but besides the the meaning of it uh, the idea here is if you have uh, thousands of documents and if you have one index uh, for every word and uh, and you point to the book, book and the page uh, you are able to search much faster that's that's the the simplest meaning of it so uh, so in this case uh, i mean when the data is stored uh, the inverted indexes are created on the each of the column or they are created on the records because if they are created on the columns that sounds something like the value uh, oriented uh, storage that you are talking about because there also we are creating indexes for each of the word and then uh, hmm. yeah inverted index is not used strictly for uh, record searching it's used for um, document searching it's more for unstructured data right in the documents yeah hmm. so obviously you can also use inverted index for uh, database to database records in which case uh, it becomes like a regular index only normal index is document to word mapping inverted index is word to document mapping exactly exactly so so um, i mean uh, this becomes more powerful when you talk about uh, ranking um, you, you have uh, retrievals for example you can you can say given a particular word you can say it is found in 1000 books but what is the ranking of the of the books itself based on the term you are searching so that's where it becomes a big topic the information retrieval topic where we discussed all those uh, um, the, the 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 maths behind it um, i don't remember the what is it called the 
vector uh, method in document thing to the selectors and then we apply some kind of a percent similarity to retrieve all, all that comes into the picture so the this is specifically for the document searches um, and i'm not sure how it will it applies it. I mean, if you think of a document also uh, as a repository like a database you can also say document repository and yeah. then in the document repository um, the best way to do the searches is the inverted index method and I, i interpret it this way in the database raja every record will be a document and uh, the same inverted index can be used to find that where the name uh, jadeep is written for example so it will say that these these records in which the jadeep name is mentioned something like that right? if you want to implement in database yes yes you can uh, but the again then again we discussed about the range uh, retrievals i mean if you look at database uh, we should also think about all use cases uh, for uh, retrieving information from a database um point in retrieving something is different from range retrieval so one of the, i think the more the data structure that gives the maximum benefit for all use cases um in my opinion is d trees yeah. whereas if you look at inverted index also you can do range retrievals with that yeah mm. Mm. this uh, i think you use web crawler which you try which you built right something like that inverted index must be the crawler is to crawl and get the data the indexing method is the inverted index uh, method okay so it's crawl is just to get data only so because this uh, if you put in the web terms it can it can index the word against the url that in which url it is it will be found and then you can jump from one url to another url that's what i was thinking that how the uh, yeah, yeah exactly so, so, so it is basically document unstructured data or document indexing so your html is nothing but a document yeah um, you can also apply it in the in a in, in your own file system for example when you do spotlight search in your mac yeah. it is nothing but in invert index so it's uh, it's it's for any document yeah Okay, good. Okay. So the last one is in memory based. So uh, this is nothing much, but one of the methods are stored. It's it's only in memory. So stored in memory only. Uh, I will not go into details for this now. We will be focusing on these two: the B plus tree based, B tree based storage engines, and uh, LSM. Perfect. I think the 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 yeah. thing is uh, it's a uh, logical stuff here because these two things, in my opinion, are very fundamental and uh, yeah. for us all to understand. So should we continue this from a fresh session? Start from here. Can can. Yeah, everybody is okay with that. Yeah. Okay. Oh. Till this point, anything else? Uh, any suggestion to add it into this so we can I mean. provide or we should discuss it after we complete this b3 and lsm well, one thing is i think we need to talk about how it is applied where it is applied that, that um, discussion we need to have um so maybe in the next session um <laughs> you can help us to prepare or we all can also think through it and, and because the abstract theory is one thing but to know know that where it is applied which uh, system uses what and that will give us a very good uh, understanding no okay I okay okay we read about indexing and indexing types but we need to understand that way it should be implemented and should not be implemented and what are the what are the if you if you implement indexing what are the things you have to keep in your mind that also we, we need to understand right like indexing may increase the disk memory disk utilization uh, there are some there should be some cons to that also right so that also we need to when to use yeah, when to use what yeah, the use cases for it Yeah, very good point, Okay. Uh, when to use which indexes, which you are saying, right? Or the storage index. Storage, storage, storage method or indexes. Yeah, all of that. Well, whatever we discussed, all the theory we discussed, mm -hmm. uh, where it is used and when to use what. Yeah. Okay. 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 Then let me stop recording.